Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to another second channel video. Most people can't name every single country on Earth, and who can blame them when there's so many of these things? However, counterintuitively, at the same time, most people do know the names of a few countries that aren't actually real. They'll know the names of a few places they believe to be countries that actually are not. And this can happen in a few ways. One of those is that a country changes its name. Ghana used to be known as the Gold Coast, or Thailand used to be known as Siam. That's where the phrase, and I am the king of Siam, or or maybe more famously, Siamese cats come from. And uh, this is one of the ways it can happen. Another way it can happen is political instability. You know, places that are countries in people's minds, but not in the UN. So for instance, Northern Cyprus. They're, they're, uh, or have you ever tried looking for Palestine on a map? Or South Ossetia. These are places where the people who live there believe themselves to live in fully independent uh, countries. However, the United Nations would say otherwise because of factors to simplify and avoid controversy there. Um, however, there are also just countries that people believe to be countries, but are actually part of a bigger one. The classic example we always have to bring up is Greenland. People look at Greenland and think that it's a fully independent country. I mean, look at it. It's got the label on Google Maps. However, Greenland is a part of what looks like much smaller Denmark. However, Denmark is not smaller than Greenland because Denmark contains Greenland. It is a uh, possession of the Danish crown. And so in the same way, uh, there are lots of places around the world, whether it's Tasmania, actually just a part of Australia, or there is French Guiana, actually just a part of France. Uh, there are lots of places around the world that might look like independent places, but a part of some bigger country. And today I wanted to go through a lot of examples because, you know what, we, we could go for the easy shot and say, oh, Africa's a country in the minds of, uh, you know, some Americans who, who don't know geography outside of their co uh, your continent. Or, let's be honest, some people on every continent. Uh, maybe you've just heard of Africa and you're like, yeah, that's gonna be a very big country. I see ads for it all the time. Uh, people refer to Africa so often that you start to believe that it's a real thing, or you start to believe uh, it's a thing in that way. However, this has also happened to me with Siberia. I have to admit, uh, Siberia is a place until like embarrassingly recently, you know, like into my teens, I believe to be an independent place. However, it is usually just referred to as a region of Russia. It's a vast Russian province uh, encompassing most of Northern Asia with terrain spanning tundra, coniferous forest, and mountain ranges. And basically, a large portion of Asia Asian Russia is considered to be Siberia. The, the reason this came up recently is because I, I kept, I was having a conversation with my girlfriend and she kept saying, yeah, Serbia, I know nothing about the country. I know it's cold there. I know from movies, it's cold. And it came up three times in a row where I was like, Serbia cold. How do you keep saying this? And I realized she was actually referring uh, to, of course, as we all are, to Siberia. And um, yeah, because in, in games and in movies, whenever they show the location of something, they'll be like, London, UK, Washington DC, United States, or, uh, you know, Paris, France. And then whenever something's taking place in Siberia, they won't say Siberia, Russia, they just say Siberia. That's my excuse for being uh, ignorant. But yeah, Siberia um, is a giant, <laughs> giant, uh, you know, like, it's one of the largest land masses in the world, comprising 9% of the entire world's dry land mass. Despite that, it's not hugely populated. There are cities in there, as well as some of the USSR's notorious gulags, where they could send people they maybe disagreed with. You know what's great about having a ton of land mass with not many people? You can send people you hate there, and it's not like they're gonna escape. And so yeah, it's obviously very diverse in terms of, uh, I guess, geography. Very diverse in terms of flora and fauna. It's also though diverse in terms of the people that you'll find there. We mention this all the time, but Siberians look like, you know, Russians look like this if they're from the right part of uh, Siberia. These are, y y this is part of Yakutia in case you're curious. There are so many like republics inside of Russia uh, that you might look at and not realize are Russian, but actually the country for all of these things is just Russia. This is all Siberia, but it's all actually just Russia. And it's kind of nuts to think about but it's true. Also, yeah, you know, this is just a generic, like, country profile on it. I thought it was funny that at the end they have to be like, oh, did you know Siberia was important because of... Uh, anyway, whatever. It, it, they're like, wow, World War II and Siberia. Like, everything has to tie into World War II at some point. Anyway, speaking of things that tie into World War II, the next country here is probably related because Puerto Rico is my favorite country in the Caribbean. Seriously, look around the Caribbean. And you'll see there's a ton of countries here. So um, this right here, Aruba, independent country. Curacao, independent country. We got, I think this is Bonaire, independent country. Well, this one can't be independent because unlike Curacao, which has a, a big title, this one must be part of, uh, based on Crack, crack and Dick, Crack and Dick, must be part of the Netherlands. Oh, and it is. Is this part of the Caribbean Netherlands? Nope, this is Curacao. However, this is uh, the Netherlands, this is the Netherlands, and this is the Netherlands. They're just varying degrees of inside the Netherlands. And also, if we look around here, you'll see that like, okay, this island, half Saint Martin, Saint Martin. Wow, two little 
little country, two, two little countries share an island. Actually, it's France and the Netherlands. Wow, isn't that wacky? This place right here is one of those French overseas areas that is just distinctly France. If you look at the addresses, uh, you can do this for some places. It'll be like, yeah, this is Colin de saint jean saint Barthélemy, 97133, France. I mean, you can't actually fully see it, but you got to believe me. There we go. You can see it now. Uh, you, th this is just a part of France chilling in the Caribbean. However, Puerto Rico, this giant landmass, trust me when I say this is not part of a European country. It's not a colony of any European country because uh, it's, it's got its own flag. It's got its own uh, nickname and motto and anthem that... Their, their motto is John is his name. I mean, I mean, that's 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 catchy. Look, they got a nickname, uh, Isla del Encanto. I love that movie too. We've got so much in common. Uh, even their own anthem. But despite that, do you know do you know who the uh, the president is? Joe Biden. Wow, they elected the same guy. He he has two jobs. He runs this place as. No, obviously, they're a sovereign state, United States. Puerto Rico is a part of the United States of America, despite, if you look at the population, it's, you know, I mean, it's 98.9% it's, it's Hispanic or Latino. But, you know, with all, the, with all the immigration from Mexico these days, that's probably what that is, except common language, 94.3% Spanish. Yeah, uh, it, it, this place is a Spanish-speaking colony that just is a part of the United States. And it's the strangest thing, because it's, again, it's referred to in TV shows so often as just Puerto Rico. You move from Puerto Rico to the United States. Uh, people will ask if you Google, like, oh yeah, so do you need a green card for that? Um, Puerto Rico has its own population. Is, is Puerto Rico considered poor? It's poorer than the poorest state of the United States. It's not like, oh yeah, this is a whole thing. Uh, anyway, so it's a, it's a very interesting situation. Should I, should I prove them that Puerto Rico uh, green card? Uh, yeah, there we go. Actually, I guess that'd be for uh, Puerto Rico. But, like, the point is, is a lot of people assume, uh, like, a lot of people have to ask, like, is a person from Puerto Rico an American citizen? Yes, they are a citizen of the country in which they live. They're just also citizens of their, their little uh, compact. Anyway, it's very interesting stuff. Also, their population's declining, which maybe is part of the reason why, uh, funnily enough, I have to mention this, the reason Puerto Rico is so interesting and will come up a lot in the media and stuff like that, besides the fact that it's the US, but also very strange, um, and also, the fact that they got it is so interesting too. Puerto Rico is an endless series of interesting, like, they, they got it by planting a false flag attack against themselves, or widely believed to- maybe a false flag against themselves? Wow, something happened and it wasn't Spain that did it, that attacked the US to get the US into war with Spain, and then they took Sp Spanish colonies, which is why there's a Spanish colony that's part of America. Very interesting stuff by itself. But the thing I wanted to talk about is because uh, Puerto Rico is the only place as an American you can move to avoid American taxes, which sounds- like, uh, that, that sounds like it shouldn't make work that way, right? Like, if you want to avoid American taxes, just don't live in America, bro. But, as you can see, if we dive into taxes on here somewhere, you know what, let's just, let's just go to the whole uh, taxation in Puerto Rico page. Um, if you are in Puerto Rico, you don't pay the uh, federal income tax to the US because uh, it's a unincorporated territory, uh, and so even though you're a US citizen, you can move there, it's a US interest, whatever, what that means is you pay some federal taxes, but not federal income taxes. And because taxes are lower here, if you're curious about how they actually work, you pay, uh, it, there's a whole there's a whole page on it apparently, but you, you pay a lower tax rate here, and if you leave, le however, um, if you leave the United States, was my point, um, the United States is one of four countries, so US, Hungary, uh, Myanmar, Burma, or Eritrea, there's also a couple of islands, but we'll leave those for now, um, the, the US is one of just four countries, which doesn't tax based on where you live, I, I live in the United States, I will pay taxes to the United States. It taxes based on citizenship. It also taxes you if you live there. But they, if you're an American citizen, you pay American taxes. If you're an American citizen living in the in France, you'll pay their taxes there. And you might be thinking, well, this is something four countries do. However, Hungary has an exception if you're a dual citizen. Once you get another citizenship, you, you know, you don't have to pay hungry taxes. Uh, Myanmar and Burma is a very weird case too, where it's not really a thing. And Eritrea um, is, is, it gets in a lot of trouble. They're going to be repealing it soon. I was reading into like, okay, so the US can enforce their worldwide income tax because they're the US. What are you going to do? But Eritrea, right? Like they're not going to be able to get away with that. And apparently the way they enforce that is if you're an Eritrea citizen abroad and don't pay the special tax, then your relatives in Eritrea will be severely harassed, beaten and imprisoned. So, do you want to be harassed, beaten, and imprisoned? Better better pay that 2% uh, tax. Or, oh, sorry, if you want to be harassed, imprisoned, 
find a relative and get them to leave Eritrea. But if you don't want to be uh, don't want to have your relatives harassed and imprisoned, you have to pay a two percent tax. However, that's a two percent tax. Americans have to pay full income taxes as if they're in America even when they're overseas. And so the only way to avoid it is to move to another part of America, which is why a fair few celebrities and slash or, um, I don't know, like right-wing wealth management figures on the internet, we could say, uh, will say, move to Puerto Rico. They have significantly lower uh, taxes uh, than federal income taxes, as you can see. Unless you work for the US government federally, which, you know, like, just don't do that, I guess. Fun fact. But yeah, isn't that wacky? The only way to avoid American taxes is American, besides getting rid of your American citizenship, which is, ooh, ooh, ooh you don't wanna, you know, let's, let's not talk about how hard that is, um, is to move to a part of America, which even has like an American vibing flag. Like, this looks like America and Cuba's flag got together and had a party. And speaking of America and Cuba getting together and having a party, Happens all the time, trust me. Uh, the next example I wanted to use here, because you know what, Puerto Rico, super sad. This is probably one of the reasons why they've lowered taxes, trying to encourage that foreign investment. And the easiest way to encourage foreign investment is if the foreign investment comes from your own country, but like they believe it's foreign, whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> isn't this sad by the way? They were bigger than Costa Rica. They were like double and now they're like half. Such a tragic tale. Speaking of tragic tales though, um, the next example I wanted to talk about here is Dubai, or if you like it a lot, Dubai. Um, because Dubai is always, you know, listed in movies as like, yeah, I'm in Dubai now. You go there for your fun stuff. However, despite being a cosmopolitan metropolis, 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 yeah, despite being a cosmopolitan metropolis, 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 you know, I'm bad at words, okay? You don't, you don't watch this channel for the words, I hope. If you do, thank you. But yeah, it's, um, one of the most popular tourist destinations and it has its own flag and it's got its own coat of arms. Look, they got a boat on there and an, an eagle, a bird of some form. Uh, they got Dubai written on there. Uh, they, they've got all the things that would make them a country, but subdivisions even. But uh, look, there's even a demonym. You can be a Dubaian. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. You can be a Dubaian. Uh, however, despite that fact, ah, that's that's not really a country. It's a part of the United Arab Emirates. It's the most populous city in the UAE, and it's the capital of the Emirate of Dubai. So it's actually multiple layers deep on this. This is a city within an emirate within the United Arab Emirates, which is actually the country. Um, honestly, the UAE is one of those like weakest put together countries. I think we've mentioned this uh, previously. Uh, however, uh, yeah, Dubai is this very strange example of like, yeah, it's, it's much more well known than the rest of the country put together. And people will say they're going to Dubai, not to the UAE. When you go to Washington or when you go to um, you know, Madrid, you don't say I'm going to Madrid. Uh, you know, like, uh, well, what country is that? Ah, I don't know, Madrid, maybe. Um, <laughs> you know, there's no question about the country afterwards. But for a lot of people, there kind of is with Dubai. Speaking of questions, the next thing we have to talk about here, um, a place that you might think is a country but not, is Tibet. Tibet, uh, a lot of people think of as being its own country because they got, like, a spiritual leader, uh, the Dalai Lama, uh, is from Tibet. However, did you know Tibet is actually a part of China? This is something that has no controversy. Uh, China's really good to Tibet. There's there's never any issues. Tibet loves being under China. Um, there's 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 no issue. You know that it's it, it goes really well all of the time, and um, no one has any issues with it. And that's that's really good. Good good job, China. Always keeping an eye on their uh, their things. Uh, the next example here is Antarctica. Again, when you look on a map, it's like it's got a great name, which means Antarctica is less of a country than than Aruba is. Which, by the way, I, I want to say Aruba and Curacao both use the US dollar, um, which is quirky, right? You know, quirky little facts. But um, what currency is used in Antarctica? I actually don't know. What do you think it says if you put Antarctica? Like, it definitely doesn't have a currency. Would the de facto currency just be the one used in... You know, should we Google this? Is this... You know, yeah, what what currency do they use in Antarctica? Like, I, I know there isn't an official currency. I'm just curious as to what it... Also, what does gaslighting mean? Anyway, what does Antarctica... Uh, what currency uh, does Antarctica... See, do you see that by the way Puerto Rico came up first? Does Antarctica use? Um, the answer is the Antarctic dollar. Well, this is a, literally a fake website comes up. How much is it? You know, like, what? <laughs> the value of an Antarctic dollar is $2. So there you go. Uh, Antarctica isn't a real place. It's a, or it's a real place, but it's not a country. It's a, it's a collection of places that are agreed not to be owned by any countries, but then also lots of countries claim they own it, but they have overlapping claims. And inside their claims, lots of other countries have full-on scientific bases. No one's allowed a military base there, 
but like countries as far afield as like Belgium. What are you doing on Antarctica, Belgium? Uh, or Finland, Argentina. Uh, there's some oddballs. Like Ukraine in, in Graham land, Ukraine has a scientific base. What are you doing in Antarctica, Ukraine? Um, South Korea's over here. Um, you know, like what what are you doing on Antarctica, India? What interest do you have here? Anyway, long story short, you can see there's lots of countries that are inside of these other countries, but none of it is anyone's country. It's that one place on Earth where we just say, please don't ask me about it because it gets very confusing quickly. You know, the very fun thing about Antarctica is if you're in this point right here, the very South Pole, where apparently America's planted a flag, because <laughs> of course they have. Uh, if you're at the very, very South Pole, every direction is North. And that's one of those like things that takes you forever to think about. Like you can go in every direction and it's all north. But anyway, speaking of things you can think about forever uh, and not come to a conclusion with, because again, I, I feel as though basically a lot of the world are lesser known, but you might not know if it's a country or not looking at it. Um, the Caribbean is a great example. Without knowledge, how are you meant to know that like, okay, this is this is the US and this is the UK. I can make that, that judgment right there. Thank you for labeling it nice and clearly. Is this a part of a country? I mean, it's probably Puerto Rico, you'd assume. But without knowledge, uh, you know, without having specifically learned, where is the settlement? Is this a part of the British Virgin Islands? What What's going on there? It's very hard to know which of these are countries and which of them are, you know, just overseas territories. The Scarborough over on Trinidad and Tobago. Is that really called Scarborough? You know, you, you, could, you could question this forever. This could easily be a part of the UK, I'm guessing. Let's look at Scarborough right now. Huh. Doesn't look like the Scarborough I know. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's interesting, by the way, islands. But anyway, so uh, the, the other place on Earth where that's true, besides the Caribbean, is, this, is the South Pacific. Like, American Samoa, that's probably American. Okay, easy to work out. But like, French, you know, Polynesia is a place... Okay, where is... I can't even find Polynesia right now. So this Micronesia, own country. You know, that's, that's, that's easy enough to know. Polynesia, on the other hand... Uh, which I, I, I genuinely am having an issue finding. There we go. Polynesia, part of France, or the French Polynesian part is. There's also, the, you know, the Cook Islands and New Zealand and like, how are you meant to keep track of this stuff? It's very hard is my point. I can understand making mistakes. However, uh, something I wanted to talk about is the Galapagos Islands. I would say these are a South American example, you know, of like, they're islands that look like they could belong to quite a few countries. And uh, all, all I found out while looking through here is like, oh, the Galapagos Goes Islands, which is famously where Charles Darwin is said to have his eureka moment and have discovered evolution, uh, you know, have a fun discussion about evolution in the comments. But this is supposedly where he he just realized, like, you know what? Birds here look so weird that they're, something must be going weird. And then he, he came up with evolution or natural selection, as I think the theory Charles Darwin had. Anyway, so th this is where Darwin went and had his fun thing. However, um, while looking into it, I realized, like, huh. There's like a major highway going through uh, here, and it's got the same like crest sign as the United States interstate system. And I looked it up, and it really is, right? That is the interstate marker, like, da -da 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 -da. and I was like, huh, isn't that odd? That's that's very odd. How could you see that as anything but odd? And so then I was looking through that, and then like, oh, yeah, there's, there's all these fun things going on. And then, uh, while well, looking into, uh, trying to look into the Ecuador highway system, because I was trying to look into like, okay, so Ecuador, um, you know, like uh, it's got the same signs, but then like over in, uh, you know, Colombia, they've got like also US looking signs. Like why are the road signs so different? And then as I was looking into that, I accidentally stumbled across this, which is the Ecuadorian Peruvian war. Apparently in 1941, Ecuador and Peru fought a war. This was of course during World War II, but because both countries were neutral in World War II, it is considered an entirely separate war because it's obviously not related to World War II. And it's the only, um, as, as far as I could tell, it's the only war that was happening at the same time as World War II. And it's just kind of fun to me that like they did this whole separate thing. And then while trying to look into this war, because I was kind of curious, I was like, huh, I wonder, you know, it took place during World War II, but it was just unrelated. They were just chilling, doing their own thing, having a fun uh, little time. Which, by the way, this this war then continued in the Sinaipa War of 1995, which apparently finished in, which but, which was when I was born, by the way. Like, this war from World War II kept going. And so I was trying to look into this some more. 
in this this most recent military conflict in the Americas. And I accidentally stumbled across this article because I was looking to neutral countries in World War II. And this article tells about an American who decided he wanted he was from Nebraska. He want, even though the U.S. was neutral in the war, he wanted to fight for you know the Allies. He wanted to fight for Britain, and so uh, he volunteered for the uh, RAF. And then he was uh, his plane went down uh, in the south in the Ireland. Ireland was neutral in World War II because you know. Uh, it's not like there were Nazis on the other side or anything, so Ireland was doing their own fun thing, it was great. <laughs> let's, 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 let's take a shot at Ireland, shall we? And so since the South was neutral, it was decided that they should be uh, interned and they'd just be stayed there. However, uh, you know, British and German pilots were kept in the same places together. They just kind of had fun, so they had, they had like, football and they, whatever, they, they had lots of fun things going on. And so this American tried to escape this camp, which was way down in the south of the Republic of Ireland. And the way he did that is he just walked out and then didn't pay for his meal, went to Dublin, caught the train to Belfast. And then he got back to RAF Eglinton. However, the British government decided that it would be unwise to upset a neutral nation. And so they sent him back to be interned in Ireland again. And so he spent two years there enjoying fox hunting and whatnot. And just like... What is World You know, like, World War II has a lot of fun things. Like, we always talk about the big, bold, brave moments. But for some people, like, I, by the way, there's just, here's, here's a wacky thing, right? Like, it's not existence. The guards had blank rounds. Visitors were permitted. A guy had his wife shipped over to Ireland so he could enjoy internment with him. Like, you know, there's a lot of, like, chill situations happening in even the craziest of wars. And so, yeah, I bet this war was probably a great time. I bet no one even died. I, I mean, I bet... Some, I mean, you know, I bet very few, I bet that they, maybe some people had a fun time. And you know what? That didn't explain my question about the highway signs in Ecuador, which didn't explain, but that can at least help you explain that this, the Galapagos Island, is a distinct part of Ecuador. And, as I mentioned in my previous video, that makes it one of the most accessible places on Earth. If you want to, I mean, in terms of visa-wise, do you want to go to the Galapagos? You can. It's the only national highway, and it doesn't intersect with any other national highway on its route because it's on an island. Yeah. Fun facts of Toy Cat. <laughs> That's where these videos are coming to. So yeah, this video is just basically to point out that there are lots of places that we assume are country level in our head, but the average person doesn't know every country, and the average person knows lots of places that aren't countries. Siberia is much more famous than, you know, dozens of countries around the world. And uh, it's a fun reminder that, like, actually, yeah, some sub-regions of countries probably are more important than some countries as a whole. Country is a measurement, a, a metric, you know, like, ooh, uh, 90 countries in favor, 90 countries against, can be hugely disproportionate. And that's a game that countries play on both sides. That's why China is so keen on getting influence in the Solomon Islands, because it's a country of how many people? It's 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 fewer than a million. It's, it's very few people. They got some concerning things going on there. But by winning influence over there, they they get some uh, they they advance some of their goals, huh? And so every country is just trying to win over the smallest countries. I think though that this is why proportional voting is important, even even on the countrywide level at the UN. And uh, yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe this was a long-winded point to say that wow, isn't it crazy how we don't even know some things sometimes? And I hope that you enjoyed learning with me, because if you did, second channel don't care. Um, unless you want to give me money. Patreon.com slash ToyCat. Videos won't improve. It's just using the money. Self-mental revenue. Um, I mean, look at this. This is a t-shirt. This looks nice, right? Oh, look, that's a bird. I learned that birds from Hollister recently. Yeah, this is a expensive t-shirt that I bought in 2015. <laughs> Can only do it with your money. Thank you for watching. Hope you don't care. Goodbye.